Geraldo Rivera wanted to get in on the action here on this uh, on the Matt Lauer story. Greetings, my friends. Welcome back. Rush Limbaugh and the EIB Network. Limbaugh Institute for Advanced Conservative Studies. Telephone number 800-282-2882. So when, when the news broke that Matt Lauer had been fired, for the reasons that he was fired, Geraldo tweeted or somehow said in the public domain that this sounded a bit extreme to him because the news business is flirty. He said the sexual harassment issue is so red hot now that there's no room for any thought or opinion but hang them high. He said if, if news, the news business, wasn't a flirty business, then how do we explain so many newsroom courtships that have led to happy marriages? And he alluded to the fact that much of what goes on in newsrooms isn't sexual harassment. It's just normal flirtiness and seduction and courtship. He said there's a slight chance that those making allegations were motivated by big money settlements, but mm, he didn't think that that was what was driving it. Well, there was a predicted outcry on social media, and Geraldo apologized uh, hours later, saying he didn't sufficiently explain that this is a horrendous problem long ridden, and harassers are deviants who deserve what is coming to them. He didn't say that at first. He didn't call them deviants. He didn't even call them harassers. And he did not say that this is a horrendous problem. He said, it's just so overblown. I mean, the, the, the news business is a flirty business. You know, where guys go out there, now Geraldo may not look at it, but Geraldo's in his 70s, and so Geraldo has a different generational take on all of this stuff. Geraldo comes, let me put it to you this way. Geraldo comes from the era and generation that wanted you to think they were banging each other left and right every night. That was how their success in the business was measured in one way, not not totally. But those were it, it was considered a feather in your cap if you were constantly hanging with uh, with babes in the news business. It's a it's undergone a massive transformation now. And part of it is due to the chickification of the news. And by that, I mean more and more women in executive positions, as well as reporting and producer and uh, on-air talent uh, positions. But it certainly is not uh, the, the old boys club that it, uh, that it used to be. And I'm talking a generation or two ago, not last year, not 10 years ago. And by the way, chickification, remember when somebody called me uh, this week and suggested that all of this is the chickification of America. And I, I want to, again, say that that's not what I'm talking about when I refer to the chickification of America is when feminism overpowers masculinity and turns men into women. That's the, I don't consider the chickification of America to be women getting jobs in powerful positions. That's not the chickification of America. The chickification of America is when men stop being men and acquiesce or subordinate themselves. And men do that all the time to get the first base and second base with women and hopefully the third base at home. But the chickification of America is a specific thing and it basically the emasculation of men. It is not in my definition, women taking over uh, industries by, by force, by numbers, or what have you. By the way, speaking of Geraldo, we're going to go back here. Audio Soundbites 1991, a Barbara Walters special interviewing the actress-singer Bette Midler. And Barbara Walters says, Bette, speaking of taste... What do you think of Geraldo Rivera's autobiography in which he said that you and he had a torrid sexual affair and that you were insatiable when it came to him? I'm going to get in trouble. It was very, uh, it was very unpleasant. A trouble. Okay, get in a little trouble. Well, 
Geraldo and his producer came to do an interview with me in the 70s, the early 70s. And this was when he was very sort of hot. And he and his producer left the crew in the other room. They pushed me into my bathroom. They broke two poppers and pushed them under my nose and proceeded to grope me. And I didn't have any idea. Grope me. I did not offer myself up on the altar of Geraldo Rivera. He was unseemly. His behavior was unseemly. Well, now. Well, now. That's Bette Midler, 1991. What do you think it means they broke two poppers and pushed them under my nose? What do you think that means? Poppers, right? Those are... (laughs) Well, what's the what's the street name for that? We're we're we're, we're no we're talking. Okay, poppers is a street. Well, we all know what it was for, but she uh, she 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 backed away and so forth. But this is you know Geraldo writes that she couldn't take her hands off of him. That Bette Midler found him insatiable, and she on Barbara Walters. This is 1991, folks. It was like 26 years ago. I guess it just got flirty, you know, in there, in the Bette Midler dressing room.